About every year, I see and hear of reports about people who take these secondary roads up in the mountains, perhaps maybe in the winter time, and they get stuck. And they don't have any food. They might have a couple of ketchup packages in the glove box, and they might have some old French fries between the car seats, but they have nothing to eat. And it really doesn't lead to their demise, but makes waiting for rescue a little bit harder and so what we're going to do today is we're going to assemble some freeze-dried emergency rations and I don't know if I want to call them emergency rations but we're going to assemble some kits that's going to contain some freeze-dried food and it's kind of a, a trail mix so I have some raspberries and I have some peas, yes. Not all trail mix can be sweet stuff, but I got peas, I got blackberries, I have blueberries, I have carrots, yes, carrots. And I have, let's see, I got pears, and I have apricots, and I have golden raspberries, these are already freeze dried. And I have apples, which are already freeze dried and peaches which are freeze-dried and the main course is this wonder food avocados now this is going to be heavy in avocados because avocados it's a great food it uh, they have lots of calories and they have fat and if you're going to have some emergency food you have to have some fat it's amazing what the body will do or won't do without fat one of my favorite series, TV shows, is it's called Alone, and it's produced by the History Channel. And if you haven't seen Alone, it's a really good thing to watch. It's like Survivor on steroids. But the contestants on Alone, they film themselves. I mean, they take these people up into the Northwest Territories of Canada or other places around the world that are just desolate and they they can only take a couple of items but the whole thing about alone is the people who wash out and tap out are usually the peoples who don't get fat in their diet I mean these people who are experienced survivalists they are looking for fat and without fat you really don't have much energy so that's the thing about these avocados I mean, they're not low calorie. These things will have between two and 300 calories per avocado and between 20 and 25 grams of fat. Now, you can make this trail mix, as I wanna call it, several ways. I've actually made this by freeze drying steak and chopping the steak up and actually putting steak meat in with my trail mix. Uh, some people could put in uh, peanuts or other types of nuts, but a, you got to kind of think for a minute who is this for is if this is going to be for your own family and you don't have any allergies well that's great but if you're going to have some of these emergency rations and you don't know who's going to perhaps need them you might have want to don't put in very many nuts or peanuts because some people have a very severe severe uh, allergic uh, reactions peanuts so I generally don't put nuts in my emergency trail mix. Most people can eat avocados, however. If you're going to be gluten-free, don't put foods in there that could be a problem if you're going to, ha if you can't have wheat. So most of these foods right here, uh, I don't have a problem with. Uh, putting some vegetables in your trail mix is not a bad idea, especially like with carrots. When carrots are freeze-dried, it's amazing how sweet they actually become they're, they're a good thing and even these are peas these are snap peas these are the type of peas where you can eat the entire pod so we're gonna make a trail mix out of this I'm, I'm dipping into some of my freeze-dried food for apples and raspberries and peaches to add to my trail mix so we're gonna make a trail mix like I said heavy on the avocados and I have a unique way of storing it 
So we're going to start with the mix first. And there's no rule on a cup of this or a cup of that. I'm just going to mix this together, taste it, see how it goes. I am going to be chopping these up in, into smaller pieces, though. So my trail mix is going to be chopped up, including the peas. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. I have my trail mix all finished and this tastes really good. When when I eat this, it almost tells like there tastes like there's nuts in here and I think that's from the avocados, but this probably has oh seven different components into it. So you can make the trail mix on however you want to do it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the trail mix in the bottom of this bag. But there's one little problem. When I was cutting this trail mix up, because it's freeze dried, a lot of powder was generated. So if I take this tr trail mix and just dump it down into the bag, there's a good chance I'm gonna get some powdery residue on the inside of this bag. And so when I try to seal this bag against that powdery residue, there's a good chance the seal is going to fail. So to keep the powder away from the bag, this will, these are for, now these are little snack bags. They're Ziploc bags, where they're, they're for snacks. And so I'm gonna take some of these little Ziploc bags and I'm gonna put the trail mix in them. And they probably hold about a cup of trail mix and I use a canning funnel. Seems to be a little bit easier. So you could say this is one portion, so to speak, of my trail mix. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna make more of these little bags, and then we'll go to the next step. I have six bags of my trail mix, and the next step is, is fairly important. Now this is, all this food is gonna go into a Mylar bag, or food storage bag, and we're gonna put an oxygen absorber in with it. So it, we know that it'll preserve the freshness of the bag. Now, if you live in a really humid area, uh, when you make your trail mix, if you think there's some humidity got back into it, before you pack it up in these little bags, just dump it into a Harvest Right tray, throw it in the uh, freeze dryer, and manipulate the buttons to, to go into final dry, and just run it for maybe an hour if you're concerned to get any moisture out of it. But I live in a fairly dry climate and I know that my food is nice and crunchy and there's not going to be any extra moisture in there. But we want to be able to preserve the food by removing the oxygen and so there's a couple of ways you can do it. One, you can take the bag and you can take, uh, can you see that, a pin and you can just go through and just put a whole bunch of holes in this bag and that will allow the oxygen that's going to be in this bag to be absorbed by the oxygen absorber or you can get a paper punch and on the tops of the bags you can go ahead and punch that corner and come over and punch that corner if you want to punch the center that's fine so I now have six ports three on each side that the oxygen absorber will be able to reach inside of these bags and remove any oxygen and help preserve the food so paper punch and a pen. So I'm gonna go through here and take care of this real quick and prepare these bags for storage. Okay, all the bags have holes in them now. So we're gonna go ahead and take two of these and put them down in the bottom, all the way at the bottom, okay? So there's the food, and we're gonna come up to this mark right here, and we're gonna go ahead and seal this. Now, I'm gonna run my thumb across it just to make sure it's nice and smooth, that I don't have it at the edge of the uh, bag up underneath that, because we don't wanna seal any of the bag underneath my other seal, so we know that it's gonna be a good seal that won't leak. Okay, so I got my oxygen absorber 
down and it goes. Now, one thing about these bags it has a top here. If you put the bags in sideways, there's going to be less material that could get trapped underneath my sill. If you put them up like this, there's a good chance this little hanging out thing could get stuck under the sill and, and make the sill worthless. So we're going to make sure these are in sideways. And we want to come down as far as possible on this bag. And there's a reason for that. So, and make this straight across. Nice and even, and we're going to go ahead and seal that. Now, if you're new to freeze drying, sometimes people kind of get paranoid a little bit. And they'll go and they'll make three or four different seals, but you know, it's going to get to the point that you know when a, a seal is good. It, it just looks good. And you just have to get to that point. Now, what we want to do, we're going to come about an inch above this sill, and we're going to make a second sill. And there's a reason for that. So, we're going to try to be nice and even. And we're going to make a second sill. Okay. So I have, I have two sills, one right here, one right there. If you get stuck somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, you can go without food much longer than you can go without water. Well, we have some food here. Well, the next thing we're going to do, we have all this extra bag material up here. So we're going to put a little built-in water supply. And this is why we need two sills right here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to make a we're going to make a perforated line between these two sills to do two things. One, it'll make it easier to separate these two halves because this is going to be the food half, and this is going to be the water half. But what we're going to do, we're going to make a perforated perf perf perforated line. So I got kitchen towel here and I have this device and for the life of me I can't remember what this device is but it's used in sewing and it's made to follow your pattern around and this will leave a series of holes or like series of dots in the pattern on your fabric from the pattern and I'm sure someone's going to tell me in the comments what this is called my wife just told it to me but I can't remember but anyway between these two sills I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this wheel. It's a perforating wheel, maybe. So anyway, I'm gonna run this across, being being nice and careful, right down the center. So I don't know if you can see that, but now I have this perforated line that will allow me to separate these two pieces. Now, another thing I'm going to do, just like a lot of these bag bags have a little notch to help tear. I'm going to come in and I'm going to go past, there's a half inch section right here that's sealed. I'm going to go in this about three quarters of an inch on both sides following that perforation. So I'm actually going to be cutting into the bag past it just a little bit. Now what this is for, if for some reason the water bag happens to rupture, and if this seal right here fails, this, these lines right here and this perforation will prevent the water from going into our dry food mix. So if this bag ruptures, if this seal fails, the water will just leak out the seam and out these holes. Now these in the future can be used to, as a tear strip and it will also allow the water to leak out through these holes rather than going into our food. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, the next step we're going to do we're going to go ahead and seal this edge like we normally would do. Okay, so I have a really nice edge right at the top here. And then just like in that uh, vacuum sealing video I made, we're going to clip off a corner just to expose 
enough room to insert a funnel. So we're going to just do something like that. So now I can take this and I can take a funnel just like that and I'm going to go ahead and put some water in here. Now I'm not going to make a water balloon. I'm only going to fill this up so it's probably going to be about a half an inch thick because we don't want too much pressure in here because we've got to come back in on this corner and reseal it when we're done. So I got my funnel in place. I'm going to go ahead and start pouring the water in. And I'm just going to see how much I have in there. I can put just a little bit more. I'm probably going to end up putting about two cups of water in there. Okay, I'm going to take out the funnel. And if I kind of squish down the sides, I can feel that I have at least two inches between the top and the bottom. Now, on this corner sill, I'm going to make two sills. One, I'm going to make an initial sill as far down as I possibly can. Now, there's going to be moisture in this area, so that sill may not be really good. The, the one I'm going to really bank on is going to be the very last sill. So I'm going, to make a, I'm going to put two sills on this corner. And this is going to have to hang off the counter so the bag doesn't leak. I have my sealer right on the edge and I have my bag hanging down be underneath. So I'm going to go in about an inch and make the first sill. Now this first sill may or may not be a good sill because there could be water between the two sills and that's okay. I came down about an inch from the edge and I made a sill, I made a sill across here. Okay, that's just my temporary sill. Now I'm going to open up the same corner that I put the funnel through, just like so. And I'm going to get a Q-tip. I'm going to insert it into that opening. And I'm just going to kind of wand it around inside. And this will pick up any moisture that may be trapped in there. So I'm just going to basically I'm going to clean this section out right here before I make my money sill, the sill that I'm going to depend on. Okay, so once that's done, I can come back in and just sill the very end of that with confidence. So now I have two sills here. So we take a look at this. I have my food in this section with an oxygen absorber and I have about two cups of water in this section. So this is my little kit right here that if I wanted to, just so it makes it a little bit easier, I can now take, I got a little piece here of uh, that two inch wide clear tape. I'm going to tape that together and now I have a little patch right here. So I can put down uh, fruit trail mix with water and today's date is the 23rd so 10 23 22 so I now have this little kit that I can put in my trunk or underneath my car seat now the thing about the water side is that I left a, a little bit of a void. You don't want to fill this all the way up and make a water balloon out of it because you need a bit of a void because I'm going into winter and it's going to get cold outside and I keep my car in the garage most of the time but you never know it's going to be exposed to the elements. This water is going to freeze and it needs to be able to expand. Now if it expands too much like what we we're talking about if this water expands too much and bursts say the seam here, well the water is just going to go into here and, and rush out. It's not going to contaminate my food. So 
this is just a, a little emergency kit, a little emergency stash of food that I can put in my trunk. Now, one thing I, I have done, and I'm going to be doing this in a demonstration later on, I have a small little press made for bursting. And I actually put this on the press and exerted 400 pounds onto this uh, little container of water and it did not burst. So this material, this mylar type of material is pretty strong. So this is the one version with the fruit trail mix. We're gonna make another type of uh, emergency ration kit. This is some beef stew that I made about two weeks ago. And we're gonna do the same thing with the trail mix, but I'm gonna put the beef stew into the food side. Now, if I'm starving, I don't care if I'm gonna eat cold beef stew, but this might be a little bit more hearty than a couple of handfuls of the fruit. This is gonna have potatoes, it's gonna have meat, it's gonna have carrots, onions, all sorts of foods, but it's going along the same basis of the other emergency kit. So we're gonna do the same thing with the beef stew as we did with the trail mix. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with the trail mix. I have the beef stew put into a one quart Ziploc bag this time. Uh, this is a little, bit big, a little bit bigger than using the small little bags and I have the name of the beef stew and the date it was freeze-dried written on the package. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the bag. We're gonna put it in sideways so we don't have the little tab going up and we're gonna go ahead and put the vent holes in it, which will allow the oxygen absorber to remove the oxygen out of the Ziploc bag. So it goes into the bag sideways. That way we don't get the uh, top of the bag in our sill then we're gonna fold it over. We're gonna make a clear area for the sill. And we're gonna put the first sill against the food side of the bag. And once that is completed, we're gonna come up by about an inch and put the second sill into the bag. Once the second sill is completed then we're going to get our little perforating tool and our kitchen towel lay it down and we're going to run the perforating tool directly between the two sills to make a tear line and we're going to come back with our scissors and just put a three quarter inch cut on both sides to allow the water to vent if the water section were to rupture and then, just like we did before, we're going to put a sill across the very top. And then we're going to go ahead and cut off the corner to allow our funnel to go into place. Now, sometimes if you have a hard time filling it with water, Sometimes you can get some air, maybe you can just blow some air into the section as if it was a balloon and blow the two sections apart. And sometimes that's a little bit easier to use the water or to fill the water section. Gonna go ahead and fill down the bottom, see how much water we have, put a little bit more in. And then we're gonna go ahead and make our first initial seal just like we did before. And before we make our final sill, the very top sill, we're going to come in with our Q-tip and separate the two sections, put the Q-tip inside, and just dry out that material, get all the water out, so that our final sill will not be contaminated with any moisture.
So my packet's all done. I wrote on here beef stew 10 16 22. This is the same date as I freeze dried my beef stew originally. And like I said, you know, this is the entire packet. You can wrap this around, put some tape around here to hold it into place if you'd like. This is my trail fruit and trail nut mix. Now, a couple of notes here. Uh, if you're going to do this and put the water in on this side, I definitely would use culinary water. I would not use dis I would not use filtered water or bottled water. It's important to have some of the chlorine from the culinary water system in your water. That will make this water more shelf stable. If you put filtered water in here without any chlorine, the stability of the water is going to be much less. Uh, now, this water will easily last one year or longer. It may become stale, but it's still water and it can still rehydrate your body. And that's an important thing. Now, we're going to go ahead and tear these apart and I'm going to show you how they work. Now, this is not an MRE. This is not a meal ready to eat. Now, I spent six years in the Air Force and we had lots of MREs. MREs, such as the beef stew MRE, the beef stew is already in a liquid form. You don't have to add water to it. MREs also have a little heating pack that actually that can actually heat your food almost to the boiling point. Of course, these do not. But if you're stranded somewhere, I don't think it's going to be an issue whether you're going to eat a cold meal. Now, you can put this on the windshield and have the sun warm up the water somewhat. And maybe you can have somewhat of a warm meal. Now, because I'm going to tear this apart and we're going to sample and see how this works, one thing I forgot to do is when you put your envelope of food in on this side, take a spoon and put it in first so that your spoon is in the bottom of the bag and then you can put your other bag on top of it. At least that way you have some way of eating your food. So with that being said, what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to separate these two along that line and it's just like it's just like a zipper opening this up. So now I have my water side and I have my food side. Now my food side has this pre made uh, tab right here that will allow me to open this up. Okay, so now this is opened up. Here's my food. Now, if this would have been done with a spoon, my spoon would be down inside. So now I have my food and it's already in its own little container. Because I was going to demonstrate this, I did not put an oxygen absorber down inside here. I would normally would would put an oxygen absorber here just to keep this food fresher. So we're going to open this up and we can put in some of our food. And this is probably going to be two to three servings. So now I have a little bowl that I can use to eat my food out of. I'm just going to prop that up here. Now on this one, I also have a tear strip. So I'm going to grab this by the corner. I'm going to go ahead and tear this open. And now I have water to pour into my food. And if I can get my spoon, I can mix this around inside. Now, normally I'd have to wait probably 10, 15 minutes to make sure this is totally hydrated, but I'm not going to put you through that. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. And we're going to check this out and see how it tastes. You know, for cold food, this is pretty darn good. So, this gives you an idea. Of how you can make your own little emergency freeze-dried ration packs. So this one is beef stew, and I have this one with uh, fruit trail mix. Now, this one is actually made to eat by itself, but if you really wanted to, you could actually pour some of the water into the trail mix and come up with like a, a glorified fruit cup, so to speak, or you could just hang on to the water 
and drink it by itself. Because as you eat this dry food, this is going to absorb a lot of the moisture out of your body. So you're going to have to replace it with some water anyway. So whether you add the water to the food or drink it separately, it doesn't really matter. So this is something you should try. And I think it's a really good idea to have in, in each of your vehicles. And it wouldn't be a bad thing to have in a 72-hour kit. I mean, think of the people down in... Uh, Florida just went through that big hurricane, I'm sure they'd love to have some, some food that they could eat right after the disaster. So, thank you for your time. I hope this was meaningful to you. Please subscribe and I will send you another video very soon.